from having the same brain power as a lump of fungus. You're, it is scary how stupid these people are, how arrogantly stupid they are, which is even worse. So when they make those comments, they have no idea what they're dealing with. I'll give you an example of that. If you were claimed to have died intestate and you were entering probate court, it is not the state that appoints the judge as executor. It is the church that appoints the judge as executor and it is called executor dative. It is an Episcopal position appointed by a bishop of the Roman cult or one of its franchises, like the Church of England. It is a holy ecclesiastical position. And if a judge doesn't know that they are holding an ecclesiastically appointed position, it's not appointed by the state. It's appointed by the church. If someone dies intestate, then the judge sitting in a surrogate court, a probate court, is a completely ecclesiastical position. If they don't know it or they deny it, then they're either a complete and utter fraud or they are completely stupid. That's 50-50 where the coin is going to land on that one. So for the lawyers and attorneys to make the kind of comments they made to the paper just highlights the stupidity. And if the Jesuits in Georgetown don't give them a call and say, back off, you don't know what you're talking about, then the Jesuits and the church indeed and the whole apparatus highlights how corrupt how broken and how stupid they've become to their own rules. The claimed executorship of a judge under probate, and it blew me away when I saw the fact that in their own statutes it is in black and white. The executorship claimed when one is intestate under probate law is the executor dative. It is an ecclesiastically appointed position. So that's the first. The second point is that Eucadia has comprehensive criminal code, comprehensive criminal law, and every single controversy, whether it is raised through Eucadia or whether it is raised through the Roman cult, must be resolved. Now if someone has made an untruth and claimed something they are not entitled, that that is an injury of the law no matter what system it is. So if one has claimed refunds for taxes to which they're not entitled, there is an appropriate clause under the criminal code of UK. And if you want to see it, go to americas-union.org or globe-union.org and click on the criminal code. If you go and have a look there, you will see it is a comprehensive criminal code. It lists all the criminal uh, clauses for Eucadia. And when we speak of a controversy being changed in terms of venue from the Roman cult to Eucadia, it does not mean that if you are charged or accused of a murder or accused of a very serious uh, crime, it means that that matter is heard as a first priority by Eucadia. Now, the reason we switched the remedy that we've been speaking about to the various court sites is that we are establishing the public record of Eucadia, turning it on. We are turning on the gazettes of Eucadia and indeed whenever a matter of controversy is brought against a member and that member wishes to use the instruments of Eucadia as part of their defence or repudiation then there must be a suit created in a valid court of Eucadia to demonstrate that the matter has shifted in priority from the Roman cult to Eucadia. No one, me, anyone, no one can claim 
that a matter can simply be thrown out on a technicality. All controversies of law must be resolved. And this is especially the case with this most recent example. And what those people did when they misused an EDP, when they misused Ukrainian instruments, not only did they uh, demonstrate contempt to the laws of the Roman cult, they also demonstrated contempt to the laws of Eucadia. And they committed a crime as yet an un or not undemonstrated, but an, an unresolved suit against Eucadia, but they certainly demonstrated sufficient evidence to allege that a crime has also been committed under Eucadia. So I want to make that clear. All controversies that are raised must be resolved. Now, if they're frivolous controversies under Eucadia, uh, under the canons, we make very clear, and I'm finishing canon laws on food and drugs, and I'm finishing canon laws on bioethics at the moment. And in many cases, the canons of Eucadia make clear that it is an absolute right to grow your own food, and it is an absolute right that naturally grown drugs should be free and not subject to the taxes and ridiculous laws that the corporations do to protect their synthesized, patented, synthetic drugs. So in many cases, when serious crimes in the Roman cult have been brought against you, the equivalent controversy in Eucadia says there is no crime, and in fact, people bringing such a claim against you itself is a crime. In other cases, when people have performed a fraud, you will find that there is an equal recognition that it is also a fraud in Eucadia. In all that we're doing, in all that I'm explaining in these talk shoes, it is about finding remedy. It is about finding restoring of the law. It is about perfecting this. It is about helping you. Now, the last thing I want to cover tonight, I'm sorry that tonight's been a bit chopped and changed, but with the coming of the storm here and with the audio, it's been a bit of a chop and changed audio tonight. And again, I'm sorry for that. The thing I want to finish tonight is, in terms of the financial system, the instruments of Eucadia have been updated and on the Supreme Financial System. And you can go and see these instruments have been updated on uh, globe-union-bank.org, for example, where you'll see the updated instruments for the Supreme Credo, which we call the Supreme Credit, the uh, gold credo which we call the gold credit and the silver credo and of course the various union monitor you can go and see them now and I hope you do go and see them because if you go and have a look at the various union monitor you will see that the instruments that are listed there at the moment are what is called public money notes and next week I'll be talking about the power and effect of public money notes notes both used for the union monitor and then for the university credit of the various communities but these instruments will be available and as a member you have the ability to secure different financial services at the campus level of a valid registered campus and uh, next week, I will be going through those with you. And I hope if you have a chance, you can go have a look during the week. And the relevance of these is that they assist in the provision of credit and trade and loans and finance and support and accounts for those that have established a business first and then later for the personal benefit of families and households. And I like you, cannot simply get a public money note to go and buy a home. I wish I could. I, want, I would love to have a home. I would love to overcome the financial difficulties that I face. But like you, I cannot go and do that directly. It's only when I'm a member of a valid local campus and that valid campus has been registered and is functional can I then go and apply, like you, under the right conditions. 
The reason I mention that is this is why we are establishing the campus with real tools and has taken the time to prepare to make sure that we know exactly the rules of the financial system. If the rules can be bent for one, then the rules can be bent again. And if the rules can be bent, then it is no different to starting up another system like the Roman cult. We are not here to set up another system like the banking families of the Roman cult. So please go and have a look. Well, look, we've covered a lot tonight. I'm going to wrap up now. I hope the, the points that were raised you found useful. I'm sure there are a number of outstanding questions that we have to go through now. I look forward to hearing from you live now, and I look forward to uh, answering the questions in the call. Look, thank you very much. And if you want to ask a question, type the in capitals question. And if you want to talk live, please press star eight or hash eight. I look forward to speaking with you. Thanks very much. I see East Pennsylvania is on the line. And so East Pennsylvania, can you hear us? Okay. Hey, Frank. Um, Hi. Let's hold off for a while. Sigo, let's hold off for a while. What I did was when you, when you need information, I, I sent it to you. Yeah, when oh, you thank you. To... Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little later on. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll mute you again. Thank you. I see there's a few questions in the chat, so we'll go through to those questions. Uh, here we go. There's a few questions up here. We'll start with the first question. Uh, this is a question that came earlier in the conversation and it came from Silver38S. The question is, referencing David Clarence, isn't a notary on the land the highest office in law contrary to a, a notary public or a notary republic? I have referenced uh, David in the past and I've referenced others as well. Uh, where I pay homage to those that have done extraordinary work and gave us uh, a, a way to view, a different way to view what was going on. At the same time, neither I nor any of us should really try and claim to be the sole authority and to have all the pieces of the puzzle. In fact, if you look at the history of what we've done, much of what we've done has been an evolving and a learning and so I would suggest on this point that whilst uh, his claims may have been valid up to the early 19th century, they are certainly not valid if we use the evidence of how wills, being one of the most important documents we ever seal, how they are seen as functioning in the system. If his claim is true, then it would not matter to record a will on the public record. If it was true, then we would have evidence where people who have perfected through a notary their will, that they could avoid the argument of probate. But as it may, the proof is that virtually every single will has been treated as a claim even though it has been perfected by a notary and that is overwhelming evidence to suggest and show that the role of the notary has been depreciated to merely ceremonial acts um, let us go down to another question and then i look forward to the to speaking to you live i see one more question here uh, the guest question is from guest 40 how does one administer uh, an administrator by warrant. Where does one pick up the paperwork to appoint one by warrant or is this done uh, auricular? Great question. We need to prepare an example for this and I would like to defer to those of you who have been doing all this legwork. I'm not simply the, uh, the person that's come up with all this. Many of you are uh, providing this information. I would like to defer to the good work that you guys are doing and the examples that you can provide that we can get them up on the open source model of UKDA and the court sites. So please give us a few days to have some examples of what a example warrant, uh, perfected warrant, could and should look like. Well, let me go to the next uh, caller here, I see. And I see that it's Alpha 999. So let me unmute Alpha 999. 